Here are the top five things that are making the news in Sierra Leone and online about Sierra Leone this week. First up, um, Save the Children released a report saying that Sierra Leonean girls trade sex for mobile phones. Now, I mean, when this came out, a lot of people were sharing it on um, Facebook and, you know, some people in Daspa were asking, is this true? Is this really going on? Are Sierra Leonean girls selling their bodies for sex? for mobile phones? And the answer is yes. Actually, when I saw this news article, I contacted the lead researcher. Her name is um, Christy Lay um, to get the actual report because the report wasn't um, shared with the story. Um, it was I saw the story for some Reuters. And I read the report. It's about 27 or 28 pages. And reading the actual direct quotes from the uh, peer group sessions that were held where basically other young young girls were trained to talk to young girls about um, you know basically the the issue that was researched and yeah I think that this is actually a sociocultural issue and not even an issue about mobile phones it's that young girls and teenage girls in Sierra Leone um, very early on are raised to you just know you just know that you're expected like once you get boobs and you hit puberty you just know that like you can now you know lure men in or pull men in and they want something from you which is your body and you can get stuff from them that's just what happens and um, it's really sickening, but it's the truth. Before mobile phones, girls were selling themselves for sex already in Sierra Leone. It's just that transactional sex is just the way it is in Sierra Leone. Um, it's disheartening, it's discouraging. I mean, you know, some of the findings are that like a lot of girls say that they have to keep multiple boyfriends because having just one boyfriend doesn't fulfill their needs. They'll have one that they love and then one that pays for their top up, one that pays for their school fees. And you're thinking if like teenage girls are doing this, the report actually says that a lot of them aren't really aware of, they're not aware that what they're doing is risky. So they don't necessarily think that they're putting themselves at risk. And they also are really poorly educated about contraceptives and, um, they think that the morning after pill is like going to protect them from STDs. So this is a huge problem and I hope that everybody who's watching in the government and Sierra Leonean parents especially um, can, we can really start being honest with ourselves about the expectations that we set for teenage girls. Um, one of the things that the study actually said was that it's, in single parent households where it's just the mother and the child, mothers tend to encourage this behavior and they actually push their daughters to go out there and look for um go being man. Basically go find man where they can do something for you. It's like if you don't pull Bobby, then you not only go begin to get man where they can't give the family, then they watch you look for say like like seriously, you know so small picking again, so if you begin to go and come. Um, so that's happening. Um, the other thing that made the news this week um, was a story in the London Evening Standard, uh, which was a feature of a lady in the UK called J. Kamara Frederick. And the headline of the story is, I have been cut, but don't say that I, have, I am mutilated. FGM, the term FGM is degrading. So basically this is um, a 30-something woman in, in the UK who talks about her experience being 15, year, 15 years old and being taken back to Sierra Leone by her mom to go and get circumcised. And she basically was like, she almost died. But even regardless of that, she doesn't think that um, it's child abuse for um, when, when parents put their children in Bundo, as we would say in Sierra Leone. So I actually do agree. I think that, um, I mean, the women in my family my mom, my grandmother, everybody um, circumcised. I'm not circumcised. But my friends that are circumcised and my mom, she definitely doesn't say that she's mutilated and they don't use the word mutilation. Um, and 
I do think that it's degrading and it's hurtful and make, makes people feel like they're victims. However, she does agree that um, she thinks that the women, at least in the UK, who are acting as intermediaries to transport girls from the UK or girls who are already in the UK to African countries are getting the procedure done in the UK, even because it's against the law there, um, that they should be punished. So, yeah. So this is, again, I mean, it's, it's a sociocultural issue. Um, but one of the things I thought about after reading this is that if you are in the diaspora and as a parent you're not sure if your daughter or your sons are ever going to come back home to live within the culture that they're, they're born in or that you're from, is it still so important for them to bear all the traditional markings and cultural um, and just, you know, and uphold the same exact culture if where they are, it's no longer relevant. Um, that, that made me think about that. I mean, we always talk about preserving our culture in the diaspora, et cetera, et cetera. But if what it means to be a woman is different where your child is born and raised, must she still be a woman in the Sierra Leonean sense of the word um, in terms of like the ethnic groups that practice circumcision? Um, that was in the London Evening Standard. The next thing that's making the news this week is that some Sierra Leonean AU troops want out of Somalia. Now, of the 850 um, army men and women who are stationed with AMISOM um, on the United Nations Peacekeeping Force in Somalia, nine of them say that they've been there longer than a year, which is when their general tour is, and um, basically they're saying that the conditions of service are not good. They don't want to, because um, Al-Shabaab has actually been targeting Sierra Leonean um, groups where there are Sierra Leonean army men. And I mean, from the article, it's saying that a lot of the Sierra Leonean, well, some of the people who are interviewed for this story say that like they didn't expect it to be the way that it is. Um, so they want to come home. And of course, the government is saying that it is normal for some soldiers on international duty to overstay. Um, beyond the length by a month or two and that they're due to be recalled um, in June. Um, the peacekeeping efforts that Sierra Leone has been engaged in, under, whether it's under the um, African Union or under the UN, have, I mean, for the government, it's like seen as a matter of pride that like we can go from a country that once needed um, peacekeepers in our own country and now our army is professional enough to be peacekeepers. So it's a matter of... Um, it's a matter of respect and it's a matter of kind of showing how long you how far you've come but this is not the first time that we've heard rumors of or complaints from army men under um the international peacekeeping forces let me stop there's a big quick pipe over my apartment <laughs> and there's nothing i can do about that and there's no way i'm going to start all over so we're going to wait for the airplane to pass and it's gone. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so this is not the first time that I've heard of complaints or comments being made by army men um, on peacekeeping mission, that the conditions of service are not great, that they don't get paid um, sometimes what they said they were going to get paid, that their superiors will hold their money. Um, so that definitely happens. The other thing that's making the news this week, which is probably not a surprise for most of you, is that Sierra Leone has the lowest life expectancy of all the countries in the world. The average life expectancy for a person born in Sierra Leone is 46 years old. 46 years old. I mean, if that doesn't make you pause. I mean, I was talking to a friend in Sierra Leone recently whose dad is like 55 and he's ill. And um, I don't always know if people who are living in Sierra Leone like, even though life is hard and everybody knows life is hard for most people, I don't know if they understand, they actually, like, think of these statistical, statistic, these statistics. Um, but, yeah, if life expectancy in Sierra Leone is 46 and you're 55 and you're ill, it's like, yeah, you're a senior citizen in Sierra Leone at 55. Um, again, the report, which is from the World Health health organization says that the reason why our life expectancy is so low is because infant mortality in Sierra Leone is so high. About 182 children from under from birth to f age five 
in a thousand die in Sierra Leone. Um, that's why the, the life expectancy is 46. The probability of dying by the age of five for every 1,000 live births in Sierra Leone is 182. That's 182 children dying before they reach the age of five in every 1,000 live births. The other thing making the news this week is that um, the Sierra Leone police have arrested 100 artists in Kenema for designing t-shirts um, that say after Yuna Bagbo. Remember last week we talked about um, the social media and kind of WhatsApp um, slangs that were saying, that people were saying that like, in response to the after, night, after you night you um, pro-president Koroma campaign, people were calling for a third term for him. Um, Last week we had said that the, the opposition had come up with, and people who are opposed to President Koroma having a third term came up with their own slogan saying that um, after Bagbo Nayun, reference to um, Lauren Bagbo in the Ivory Coast. So, so some people in Kenema wanted to print their own t-shirts that said after Bagbo Nayu. And the one of the police um, heads in Kenema arrested the person who was going to print the t-shirts and said that they wanted to cause trouble. Now, a couple of weeks ago, the resident minister East, um, Joanna Smith, who had died and was buried in Kenema, during his um, funeral, the presidential convoy, lots of supporters had after UNIU t-shirts in support of the third term electoral camp of a third term electoral campaign for President Koroma. And so um, the SLPP opposition in Kenema and the artist who was arrested are like, well, if they're allowed to have after you know you, why can't we have after Bagbo Nayu? The police said that they arrested him because they believed that those they were going to distribute the T-shirts and basically uh, go on a rampage um, or plan to cause trouble. We don't know how much of that is true. So that's everything that's making the news in Sierra Leone this week. Um, a review of the headlines are that. Sierra Leone girls are trading their sex, <laughs> they're trading sex for mobile phones. Um, Jay Kamara Frederick um, in the London Evening Standard says that she's not been cut, she's been, she's been cut, she's not been mutilated, um, that FGM is degrading. Sierra Leone AU troops want out of Somalia. Sierra Leone's life expectancy is only 46. And lastly but not least, Sierra Leone police arrest an artist for printing political t-shirts in Kenema. Now, um, two things caught my attention in social media this week, which I wanted to just talk about really quickly. Um, the first one is that people have started doing the hashtag bring back our lights um, in response to recent, um, probably the worst blackouts free time I've seen in the last um, five years. People have been, everybody that's there has complained about this and people have visited have also complained about this. So, you know, there are people who are taking pictures of themselves saying, After, you know, bring back our lights. Um, trying to hijack the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. The last thing that I'd like to mention is that, um, so a friend of mine who's also a fashion designer in Sierra Leone posted on her page that her and her family went to a hotel in Freetown called The Hub, which was formerly the Mamba Point Hotel. Um, they got there and her daughter wanted to swim and they wanted to use the internet, but basically the service was really poor and they, she felt that they had treated her that way because that they were black. There were people already in the pool and they could tell that they weren't members and basically eventually they left. When she got home with her daughter, her daughter was like, she didn't say anything basically to incite her, but her daughter basically was convinced. She's just like seven or eight years old, but she was like, mommy, I know the reason why they didn't let me slow in because, because I'm not Lebanese. Um, so she wrote to them and they wrote back and they're basically unapologetic and a whole bunch of other people who've been to the hub, formerly Bamba Point in Freetown, who are black, have actually also said that they've been mistreated and the service has been poor. So if the owners of the hub are watching this and if anybody else is watching this who's Sierra Leone and black, um, I think it's perhaps time you guys stop spending your money at the hub. If they can respect if they cannot respect black people like us, then we shouldn't be giving them our money. Um, let other people go there. You don't go there um, until they learn to respect us. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, um, please email me at info at vickyramon.com. This was sweetsalon.com presenting your top five things that made the news in Sierra Leone this week.